Okay, we'll go to uh, Michael when you're ready. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so I was listening to one of your set sayings the other day and then listening to again this morning. And I'm realizing yesterday when I was driving, you know, I had a customer call and they were upset. I was like, I'm realizing the thoughts that, so listening to what you said this morning, that seems to prevail. The big one that comes at me is, um, I'm going to be attacked like something around that. And so what you're sh suggesting this morning is like, who's going to be attacked? Is that, is that where I go with that? Yeah. Because it seems to be a very prevalent thing and it creates like a, a sense of contraction and separation and, and fear and um, really separates me. And so you see that kind of thought I'm going to be attacked would only be heard or listened to or felt deeply by something that feels inadequate or vulnerable or unsafe. Yes. Some soft place inside that feels very exposed and is in fear of attack, actually. Yeah. And is that who you really are? When you actually look at who you are, when you search your being, do you find some less than perfect thing or what do you find? I mean, I think in those moments I do, like, yeah, I get identified as this vulnerable, separate self that's, uh, tender and going to you know something is going to happen to it being beaten up by life and several thousand times and here we go again and there's this contraction but when you actually look now can you find that person <clears throat> No, but it's, I can see that it's a made up, it's a made up, um, it's, it's, it's an very, energy, isn't it? It's an energy that comes over the body. And it's a very familiar one that I've identified as definitely part of me, you know? And it's a, it's, it's a, a go-to habit, isn't it? To kind of select this rather than what you actually are. What do you find then? If you can't find that now, what do you find that is you? What's here? I mean, right now I feel like I'm I'm a space that anything, anything can get made up into. Like any, yeah. But just that one's really familiar. And you know, it's the so go-to, like you said. It's just, it's just an intense habit to go to this. But if right now there is no separate being that you can find right now, let's just confirm that again. Is it ever here? Does it sneak back in when you get in the car to drive to work? In actuality, this separate being. When the phone rings and you see it's a customer's number, do you suddenly become a separate being? It feels like that. <laughs> it, it feels, feels like, like I shift. It. I shift into that. Oh. Are you like, shifting? Are you changing? Or has your attention gone from this nothingness that we're looking at right now to this old familiar energy? Yeah, my attention has gone to that old familiar. And are you changed uh, in that moment? Are you any different at all in that moment? The tension has moved to look at something else. What about you? No. So the phone rings and this energy, attention goes to this energy and this energy has a really bad time. It gets beaten up one more time on the phone or whatever goes on. Yeah. And then it eventually disappears. And all the while you remain here untouched 
Can you be affected when the phone rings? The, the spaciousness, no, it accepts it all, but it's, I've got this real tendency to swing into this. I want you to this, hear what um, you just said that I've got this real tendency to swing. Are you the one right. swinging or are you the spaciousness? I am the spaciousness. Does spaciousness um, have this problem? Does it swing back into? Does it move around like attention? The spaciousness. Um, so who has the habit then of going to that? Thought. It's a movement of attention. Attention has its go-to places. So who is in control of the attention? Do you need to control attention? Are you any different whether attention is looking at this beautiful spaciousness that you are or whether it's looking at this icky energy? Am I any different? No. So when attention why? goes to this ickiness, yeah. the body feels tight and contracted. Yeah. When attention goes back to the spaciousness, the body feels light and free. and Eventually, yeah. But are you affected or changed at all throughout any of this? The spaciousness isn't the experience I feel like why what, what I go through, but the what what do you go through? What do you actually go through? Like it feels like terror, uh, <clears throat> my body contracts, it's like anxiety. So could that anxiety, that terror, <clears throat> could that be coming from this idea? that something's happening to you when all of this is going on. You said the words, I, when I go through this. Mm -hmm. So it just needs to be clear what you're actually going through. Are you actually going through? Of course, we have compassion for the body and the mind and the client on the phone and all of that. But it needs to be seen if it's happening to you, any of this. So would that be a good question? Is this really happening to me? Yeah, and we can answer that right now. Let's look. Okay. Right now, just imagine the phone rung and your hand picked it up and you were in a conversation. Your body was talking. Some okay. negative emotions arise in the body. Has it touched mm. the spaciousness that you are? Is there anyone being affected by any of this? I mean, it's hard for me to, um, I'm trying to imagine it, but what it yeah. feels like when, when I'm going through it is like shortness of breath, um, pit in my stomach. So these bodily sensations that I feel, I feel like very dense. When are, those, are, those... are those bodily sensations enough evidence for you that you're being affected by it as a spaciousness? They're it there, of course. They're, they're yeah. there in the body. We're not denying that, but... And we have taken them as evidence. This is happening to me. But let's really look. Is it? Mm. Let's really look now. So are these bodily sensations evidence that I'm being attacked? No, I guess I could look at them and just say, these are just bodily sensations that are occurring and I'm making it mean that. 
And what can affect the spaciousness? Can words hurt it? Can emotions impact it? Is it mm. diminished when the body feels contracted? It feels like it at the time because I feel it separates me, but it's all it's, still happening in spaciousness. Yeah. The space in the room is affected by anything at all that goes on in it. Space no. of your being. Is that affected no. by anything that's happening inside the body, outside the body? No. So here's where I would keep my attention right now if I'm you. This idea mm -hmm. keeps being suggested to me that I'm being affected. This is happening to me. And therefore, if I buy that, I've got to make it stop. Maybe that's mm -hmm. why you're feeling the terror, because you can't seem to make it stop. Mm -hmm. But a more intelligent question would be, do I even need to? Is this really happening to me? Or is there some kind of thought constructed self, a thought lattice that's just kind of runs around and says, this is happening to me? And then a lot of effort is made to try to get away or undo something or change something. So the That's cause and effect part of this would be causes. I'm this is happening to happening me. Happening to me. And the effect is the experience keeps happening. I keep okay. seem to be affected by this. But just to be clear that you cannot suffer as the self. You cannot intangible and formless and indestructible, completely impervious to any kind of harm, emotional, psychological, physical, anything. Free beyond even the idea of free. And just to be really, really clear about that is enough. Okay. Then the experience falls away because it's shown you what it needs to show you. This is not happening to, nor has ever happened to me, actually. Okay, thank you. Thank you, wonderful. 